In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. So let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. After a moment of silence to reflect on how we've lived our lives over the last week, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, and firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to the Spirit, to God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. The Collect for Christ the King. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, 
and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. A reading taken from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1. Now that I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and the love you bear towards all God's people, I never cease to give thanks for you when I mention you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the all-glorious Father, may confer on you the spiritual gifts of wisdom and vision with the knowledge of him that they bring. I pray that your inward eyes may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope to which he calls you, how rich and glorious is the share he offers you among his people in their inheritance and how vast are the resources of his power open to us who have faith. His mighty strength was seen at work when he raised Christ from the dead and enthroned him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all government and authority, all power and dominion, and any title of sovereignty that commands allegiance, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He put all things in subjection beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who is filling the universe in all its parts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on the throne of glory. All nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate people one from another, as the shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take as your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made me welcome. Lacking clothes and you clothed me. Sick and you visited me. In prison and you came to see me. Then the upright will say to him in reply, Lord, when, do we, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, lacking clothes and clothed you? When did we find you sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, In truth I tell you, in so far as you did this, to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me, with your cur curse upon you, to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you never made me welcome. Lacking clothes, and you never clothed me. Sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then... It will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or lacking clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, in truth, 
I tell you, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, and the upright to eternal life. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, to you, O Christ. One of the things that has been with humanity since it very first began, I would assume, is the competition for finite resources. It's the same in the animal and the plant kingdom. Competition to preserve our life in the face of threats to it from the consumption of others. And there are, in this world, un unfortunately, plenty of cheats, plenty of people who will take what isn't theirs and use whatever means they can to get their way. I don't know about you, but I felt a huge sense of powerlessness when the first results of the American election started coming through, showing Trump in the lead. My heart sank. I felt, you know, surely we cannot have another four years of this evil. So why doesn't this get better? I mean, we, we all want the world to be a better place and we all celebrate the idea that it will become a better place. We, tr the, you know, Diwali, um, the Hindu festival which has happened this month, it's about the triumph of light over darkness, good over evil. So why doesn't it seem to get any better? In the Christ Christian tradition, and of course in the messianic tradition, there was the tradition that the God will send his Messiah and in the case of Jesus he will come again and all things will be set right. And from the first and early days people were expecting that to happen any day. You know, don't get married says Paul, you know, the second coming is due. You won't need to. But yet, 2,000 years later, it still doesn't seem to have happened. It's not that there haven't been sort of victories for good over evil. I mean, it looks as though, uh, <coughs> barring the unthinkable, that Joe Biden will be president. Um, and also this month, of course, we've had Remembrance Sunday, which remembers uh, the triumph of the Allies over fascism. There are also the little victories, you know, the, the goodness that people produce from their hearts that benefit others. There's the kindness, the generosity, there's the justice, and there is the sacrifice. And those are indeed victories of the kingdom. And they are, in a sense, second comings. Jesus is made real in those comings in our actions. He is made real in us. We become, at those moments, truly the body of Christ. But, especially to, to the disciples, the idea of Jesus being crucified was unthinkable. And then when it happened, it must have seemed like the absolute and total disaster that they had feared. But it has been said that it's better to fail in pursuit of a cause that will ultimately, ultimately succeed than to succeed in a cause that will ultimately fail. But to keep our spirits up, to believe that the cause of which we are part, the Kingdom of God, being followers of Jesus, will ultimately succeed, we need some kind of vision. And I believe that celebrating Christ the King is reminding ourselves of that vision where in the end times everything will be made good again. Justice will reign, peace will be throughout the earth. But that crown of gold which Jesus wears 
was not worn without first wearing the crown of thorns. Amen. And would you say with me the creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray to our everlasting God through our Saviour Jesus, who is both Christ the King and the Son of Man, and who understands our needs and the needs of this world. Lord Jesus Christ, enthroned in splendour, yet here by our side, ruler of all, yet friend of all. We bring you our worship, we bring you ourselves, praising you for your unfailing love and celebrating your great goodness. For you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, giver of so much. We praise your name, Lord. We praise your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace, Lord. Have mercy on our broken and divided world. Put peace into the hearts of all people, that all races may learn to live as members of one family and in fellowship with each other. We pray for all governments and authorities and the procedures they are developing to try and contain the spread of the COVID virus. For the scientists working hard on vaccines, all the doctors, nurses and healthcare workers who have put their own lives at risk to care for their sick patients. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we bring before you all who are in any kind of need, praying for your healing and reassuring touch, for the anxious, the homeless, the unemployed, those addicted to drink or drugs, the lonely, those passing through times of illness, and those who are worried about their loved ones who are ill. Praying now for those in our communities, Wyatt and Garrett Ruffin, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret and Jim Gilmore, Luke Firth, Sandra Mella, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Richard Abbess, John Tuckwood, Peter Widowson, Margaret Malpass and Jackie Piercy. 
and for those mourning the loss of a loved one, thinking of the family and friends of Neville Sturman, Sidney Patrick, Ethel Hadfield, Derek Baden-Bird, Madge Bunting and Fred Parklet, and those whose anniversaries fall at this time, thinking of Charles Towner. In a moment of quiet, we bring them all before you now, Lord. May all who are suffering in any kind of way Know the comforting power of your presence and the wholeness only you can give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ the King, you are higher than our highest thoughts, greater than we can ever begin to imagine. There is nothing that you are unable to do, no one you are unable to change. You are always at work within us, reaching out to transform our lives. We praise you for all that you have done for us, the good things that we have received from your hands, the guidance you have so freely given. We praise you for your continuing presence here with us. Help us to sense your nearness and hear your voice, responding freely and gladly in faith, not holding back, but accepting your love and lifting our hearts in grateful worship and heartfelt praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole, Let the peace of Christ be rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Please find a way to share the peace with those who are sharing this service with you. Come 
see his hands and his feet The scars that speak of sacrifice Hands that flung stars into space As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, are now reunited in, on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son Jesus Christ to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and, taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, laid once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us into your loving arms and bring us with St James and St John the Baptist and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, would you join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. body of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep me in eternal life. Amen. And as we say, the act of spiritual communion, please feel free to adjust your posture and if you wish, raise your palms or kneel or whatever suits best your need. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing 
of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. So if you're not going anywhere, remain. But we say, still say together, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.